Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. It's this camera over here, right? Yeah, that, that one, one over, over there. there. That okay. One over there. Yeah, we got lots of cameras set up here tonight <laughs> because we have a great guest who's going to tell us all about auditioning, and that's Everett Oliver. Everett, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? We're 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 not too bad. <laughs> he's he's a guest worthy of setting up extra cameras. That's right. Getting our green screen working, all that stuff. Because Everett's. That's right. So if you've got a question for Everett about auditioning, throw it in the chat room because. I know Jeff Holman's hiding in there somewhere, writing down every question and making sure we get those questions so we can ask Everett a little bit later on. But we got lots of stuff to talk to him ab about in the next half this hour. This could so. quite possibly be one of the most important guests we've had on this year because, <laughs> because he is literally telling you how to get through an audition and sound like you know what the heck you're doing. Right. So It's a big deal. I know. Voice over body shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. And we are back in our wonderful studio, <laughs> surrounded by microphones and cameras and all studio sorts of Studio version stuff. seven? The, uh, I guess. <laughs> we've, re we've revamped a few times. Each time, because we, we haven't had a pattern of doing the show here. That's so true. So each time we try things that are a little bit different. Right. But tonight we're like, I want multiple cams. Yeah. So, you know, give me the same shot there, And a green there, screen. Right. Single and a shot. green screen. Okay, see, now there's the, there, there's the two single Whoa. shots. Whoa. Right. Whoa, dude. Yeah, look at that. There yeah. we are. Single, yeah. single cam, and, you know, we finally figured out how to do all this stuff, so. <laughs> Just in time. When, why are we doing it? Because we can. Because it's fun. That's right. But uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. I, of course, had a... And aside from my boo-boo from last week when we yeah. were in Toronto, then I had a major boo-boo because -boo somebody rear-ended me, and then <sighs> I hit them in the car in front, and they both left. You were a pinball in a pinball game, and, and the game just drove away. Right, and I became an accordion. <laughs> and That is not even, I, I don't even know what to say, it, other than we're glad you're okay. I'm, I'm glad you I'm okay, You have some boo-boos, and you now have a new car because you really had no choice. No, you know, and if you, you couldn't tried to buy, even buy the same car you owned, it was impossible. If you try to buy a new car right now, you're going to be shocked at what the what dealerships are charging over the MSRP. It's disgusting. It is, and they're they're making up for all the money they lost during the the pandemic. And the gas companies are making up for all the money they lost during hmm, never. I don't think. <laughs> anyway. No, I don't think they, they've been losing. <laughs> That's a another cent. story. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we want to talk about helping you make some money, and the way you do that as a voice actor is by auditioning. So we decided, why don't we have somebody on who really, 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 really mm -hmm. understands auditioning? And so we figured out, well, why don't we talk to Everett? So anyway, no Everett brainer. Oliver is a 25-year veteran of the entertainment industry. He specializes in professional directing for voiceover auditions. He has experience as an animation demo co-producer, a private coach for commercial and animation, as well as a career building consultant. That is a career Building, building consultant. consultant. No, oh, a, career a career building, building. consultant. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. What There's tips does he offer there. to help you book the work you desire? Let's welcome back to our show. It's been a while, though. And that's Everett Oliver. Everett, are you in there somewhere? I am here. Hey, oh, buddy. How are you? Good, good how are to you? see you. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to get everybody 
back in the studio. Of course, I don't know where we're going to put him. Including an audience? Including an audience. You do remember we had about... Mm. 18 people in here one night. <laughs> was, I was there. I was yeah. there. So, I, so we have a witness that will prove that that actually happened. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Uh, I know. All right. So you, you, you coach people with their auditions. I mean, but let's start... Now, you've been in the business for like 25 years. Plus. What brought you to this sort of niche area of coaching? Um, basically I worked at a talent agency and they f basically threw me in the booth and, you know, they said, listen, you need to start, you know, directing and helping actors. Since I came from the casting background, I came from the casting side of animation. So when all of my shows ended in animation, I talked to my mentor who was Charlie Adler and Charlie Adler told me, oh, you need to go ahead and work at a talent agency and be a booth director. And I had no idea what a booth director was. And then um, I used to work for AVO Talent. So uh, Sandy Schnarr and Peter Morano, they threw me in a booth. And so that's how my life started. I just started directing and started understanding actors and picking up little things here and there to help them book. That's so, how it really started. So yeah, it just so fell, in into, the trenches. Just basically fell into it. Yeah. yeah. So nice. talent would come into into the agency, which doesn't go on a whole lot anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. And uh, and I so do it. And, and there was a booth there, and you would sit there, and and they would audition for things, and you're like, slow down. I would, yeah. I would speed slow, up. Like, slow down. Speed up. <laughs> That's not you. Get out of your head. I would. <laughs> you know. That's that, that is that what you have? Mm, that's not gonna work. <laughs> I would give them I would give them my honest opinion. Yeah. And the, the basic honest opinion would be my facial expressions, because everybody could read my facial expressions. Yeah, so if it sure. was a smile and go like this, that's great. But if it was one of those, oh, that means I have to do it again. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, you don't have to name names, but there were, were there people that were showing up in your booth a lot more than others? Were there a few that you saw far more regularly oh, than would, others? Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. you know, they came in on a pretty, pretty regular basis. I mean, we had a full schedule. So I would audition from like 930 in the morning until probably 4, 430 in the afternoon. And it was in 15 minute increments. So you was receiving about maybe five or six pieces of copy. And you literally had to study the night before. So when you came into the booth, you had two takes, maybe three, to get it right. And then I would turn around and be like, oh, that, get out. Next, <laughs> next character, next character. Because the agents yeah. would be out there saying, you're taking way too long with them. You know, this is not something where they came in and studied. They had to be prepared. They, had to, they were so coming in I've, cold on these. Totally. And so now, you know, I try to have my actors, you know, me doing it for myself, um, you know, try to tell them, listen, you have to prepare and come at it the same exact way, because what's going to happen when you book a job and you're put on the spot? You know, and and in the casting people and the producers are going to be throwing things at you and you have to be ready. So this is what I try to prepare the actors who I work with. Now, I'd like to think that people understand the importance of taking auditions seriously and to not keep doing the same thing. How do you learn to differentiate yourself and, and do something different every time? How do you, what, what, what are your suggestions? Well, you know, you have to come from, a, from an angle of a point of view. I think that a lot of people are basically just reading the copy. They're not actually breaking down the scripts or not understanding what's happening in the scripts. And or they're following the same type of the directions. They're, say, they're following the specs. They're not thinking themselves outside of the box. So, you know, my suggestion would be is to you've got to be creative. There are now thousands of you who are auditioning for the same part across the whole world. So do one take that comes from the actual specs that which they want and then throw in a second take that's gonna wow them. Don't give them the same acting style, but give them something that's really gonna make your personality, bring your personality into it. Because everybody has different personalities and that's what's gonna help you book. And you gotta keep at it, you know, you can't, you know, 
do voiceovers for two, three months and then stop and then pick back up. You know, it, you got to keep doing it. You got to keep researching. You have to keep playing. You've got to keep coaching. You got to keep doing workout groups. This is going to make you a better audition actor. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, it's amazing how everybody is, seems like they get locked in this mode of imitation. Yeah. But I guess mm -hmm. that's, is that, I mean, if you're starting from z literally zero, is that where you start is imitating or is that just no. a natural proclivity of a person who does voiceover because we love just, to imitate? No. I mean, the first thing I tell people is you, you have to take, you have to take acting. You have to do yeah. improv. Those are the first two. I mean, I made a lot of people who, who say I was rec actually working with somebody today and I could tell that they were imitating, you know, like a coworker. And I was like, no, no, let's go back to basics. You have to know the acting. It's all about your acting. It's nothing about your voice. I'm, I can't even tell you how many people are so concerned about that. And yeah. I have to drill it into them with yeah. tough love. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's I another that gateway. One. That's another gateway into voiceover, right? Which is the thing that everybody hears at least once. You've got a great voice. Aren't you doing voiceover? I get that all the damn time. Right. And, and you hear that a lot. And Aren't you're you not. doing voiceover? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing voiceover. <laughs> no. And I, I could talk. Yeah, I get it all the time. They say, what do you do for a living? I'm a voice actor. Oh, I can tell. Like, <laughs> if it's just the way I sound for crying out loud. But, you know, perhaps I talk a little bit more properly than other people. You enunciate? And I, you know, unlike a lot of kids today, I just keep talking like this. You I have complete, no idea what they're saying. You complete you know, sentences? Yeah. Hey, give me the deep time there. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? So tell, the, tell them to slow down. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, and I'm sure you're working with a lot of kids these days. And when I say kids, I mean anybody under, under 40. 40. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah. Who, there, it's just a different culture. And, and how do you have to work with, with folks like that? Because, I mean, all right, you're probably well, closer to that than we are, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> let's be clear about that. All right. <laughs> um, I work, yes. In fact, the good news is today I've been working with, uh, she's got to be about nine, maybe 10 years old. And she got, she booked something today. And mm. I've been working with her for about a good, year on learning very conversational reads not she comes from the theater background mm. so she's been shouting at me for a couple of months <laughs> you kind of have to, de <laughs> you have to, you have to detune her right, right the little old lady throttle. in the back row hey hey, hey. <laughs> pull back the throttle right yes but i mean she's learned you know yeah. i'm one to give you know you have to do homework you have to do research you have to keep studying mm. And I've drilled it into her. So I was very proud to find out that we got our first she got a call back probably about three weeks ago. And she just found out today she booked. So that wow. was my, you know, pride Com and joy. Is that a her. commercial thing? Commercial. It was an animation. animation. It was actually, oh, an animation. it was actually an animation. Wow. Um, How, guess what, so. When you, so yeah. So when you're talking about, you need to do your homework, you need to do your research. Would you, you feel like that's to, more for animation stuff or? That's for everything across the board. Everything. You need to be watching. What's the kind of research shows? you're doing? Yeah. Television shows, animation shows, uh, you need to find out what the trends are happening commercial wise. You need to find out what kind of animation shows that are out there, movies for mm -hmm. animation, um, TV, uh, what new promos that are happening, what's going on in the narration world. I mean, you need to be soaking up everything like a sponge. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are not doing that. And what they're doing is is, hey, I get this audition, and then the first thing they think of, they think of me. And then they contact me and then I'm asking them a whole series of questions. And I can tell instantly that they're not going to book this because the fact is that they have not done what they're supposed to do and they expect me to do it for them. And that's mm. a no, no. Mm -hmm. And the same Absolutely. is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, where if you're just joining us, you've already missed a ton. That's important. Everett Oliver is our guest. We're talking about auditioning. Because that's what we do for as voice actors. We got to audition so people can hear us and say, you know, that's the right voice for doing that. If you've got a question for Everett about auditioning or coaching or one of these things that, that he deals with, 
You can put it in the chat room, and Jeff Holman is right there, and he's going to write it down, and we're going to ask Everett in the next segment in just a little bit. So don't be shy. Ask your questions. You know, you're going to think of it like two minutes before we're done, and all of a sudden, there's like 10 questions. But now we want you to put your questions in so we can answer them in the next bit. Anyway. Okay, so what are some, I mean, you've mentioned this a little bit. You talked about people just doing it the way they, you know, they think that they, they should do it or just talk their voice. What are some of the common mistakes that you see people make when they're, they're sending in auditions? They take too long with the audition. Something that should take them probably 15 to 30 minutes. It's taken them 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, that's too they're, long. Yeah. They're overthinking it. Um, Editing, they have no editing skills. But that's part of it. Um, so the editing is slightly off. Um, timing, pacing, like I said, they don't study. Um, they're not marking their scripts up. That's a really a major factor. They're not sure what's happening with that. They don't improv. Um, how many is that? <laughs> that's top that's, of my that's head. enough. That's enough to make a difference, I think, with some people. You know, they don't have a point of view. Um, I'm trying to think of all the people who have stuck today. Um, they're listening to their voice and not concentrating on their acting. Uh, that's what I can think of right now. Right, and that's and that's a ton because yeah. that's what every I, you know, and I. I hear a lot of auditions too. People are sending mm -hmm. us audio all the time and we're mm -hmm. they're like, well, they're just reading so we can hear what the audio sounds like and stuff. But they all try to, they put, try to put a performance in for the stuff they send you, George. Put a performance in like a, like a long script. You mean? Not a long script, but at least try to, you know, sound like an audition as opposed to, hi, this is my audio. And, oh, I insist mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Yeah. When they send me a, just a, Okay, I'm talking into a microphone. I'm like, no, no. no I how need would to you hear, use this microphone? I need to hear, yeah, your technique, your how you place the mic, how far away, how much energy you project. Right. You know, it comes uh, across flat. All. Comes across flat reads too. Yeah, it, whatever it is, if you read flat, mm -hmm. that's the way I want to hear it because right. that's going to determine what we're going to be doing today. Right. Exactly. So, uh, so people make a lot of mistakes. I mean, especially people who are new. Mm -hmm. People who have been doing it for a while, they still make those kinds of mistakes too. I mean, after a while, I imagine some people feel like they just, they can just phone it in because they always book. Is you find that a common thing, or do the people that always book, they are pros and they are always on and they always get it done? They get it. I mean, the people are pros. Yes, you're exactly right. They know they get it done. Um, I think now the thing is is. It's about now stepping outside of your comfort zone. That's what's going to really help you book. And, and now I'm working with actors to go not on a surface level is what I call it, but you got to go on a much more deeper level because of the simple fact is that now that we're all doing stuff from home, you don't really know what your competition is. That's true. Well, we never know what our competition is. We do these I, auditions. I did. We throw it I did. Well, yeah, <laughs> when I worked at agency. Was, right. You <laughs> heard them all. We, we didn't, right. we never heard what anybody else was doing. It was like, we were right. just guessing, you know, why did this guy book it? And, you know, why didn't I? And they'll never tell you. You probably will. I, I did. I oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, if you got a question for Everett, throw it in the chat room right now, whether you're in Facebook live, whether you're on YouTube live, where else are you doing this? I don't know. I, someplace else. It just goes out into the ether and everybody is watching. But no matter where you're watching, if there's a chat room there, throw the question in there right now. Um, what do you do to help people improve? I mean, I, obviously, if they're at an agency, you know, when you were working in an agency, you were working with pros, people who agents have said, okay, we want to work with these people. Now you're working with people who are trying to break into the business. How do you get them to improve? And I'm sure it's pretty much the same answer that they, they had to do their homework. I just, you know, I drill stuff into them. I mean, it's constantly, you know, attending classes. What I, I'll put, I'll have on some online classes. I'll bring talent agents. I'll bring casting people in front of them to um, see what they can do in front of a casting person or an agent. 
and then I'll give them personal notes. I'll do private, you know, coachings with them and tell them specifically as to what they're doing wrong. So I'm constantly drilling into them. I can hear Patrick Kushner in my head now, like trying to come up with ways to get out of your head or, you know, having quotes and sayings in front of you. Just so the fact is that that you're going to look up and you're going to see, oh, I need to be consistent in your character or I need to add improv. So it's just like a thing they have to keep. They've got to bring their A game for me to go ahead and pull out their performance. But the other thing that just hit me, too, is they also got to be willing to go ahead and play. I think that's one of the things that's missing also in actors' performances is that the lack of them playing because they're so busy worried about booking the job. So they need to be mm. vulnerable for them to be comfortable as to who they are. Right. And real actors Ooh. really know mm -hmm. that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're all actors. They all come from acting backgrounds, whether or not they're at non-union or union agencies. I have an agent. I don't have an agent. But I think that the main consistent thing which is hitting me now is they don't understand who they are. And I could pinpoint who they are within probably 30 seconds to a minute hmm. because I'm tapping into them and fully understanding them. And that's really one of my unique gifts that I have that I can go ahead and say, that's not you, that's somebody else. So if you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do as a first take, Let's do that as a first take. Let's lay that audition down as a first take because that's what you came up with. Now I'm looking for you. Right. And let's go, let's go even deeper, depending on what the kind of copy is. Right. And stop worrying about freaking out about, oh my God, I gotta pay my health insurance, or I need to book this job because you know they're gonna tow away my car. And I think people yeah. get caught up in everyday life, and this is why they don't book. Right. So people I mean, I've had people book when people are just not feeling well. Hmm. I've because, had people that book because they're not thinking about it. They're vulnerable. Right, right. Oh, oh my gosh, that's fascinating. interesting. So you book, you book, you book when things are happening in, in your personal life, you know, mm -hmm. that you're going through some sort of trauma. That way, because you're like, you know, especially women who are women who are about to give birth or, you know, guys who are just, you just go in there and they just do it because they don't care. That's maybe you had a way. loss, maybe right. uh, some mm -hmm. you know, some tragedy, something happened. really tragic, and you're kind of mm -hmm. raw and you're a little on the edge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. okay. What I do is I feel out the care, I feel out the actor in the in the atmosphere, so I have a sense and I have aware of once I kind of understand the dynamics of whatever situation is happening, because then I could tap in and then I could go ahead and say, listen, like I had, for example, I can do it from example. I had a um, little girl who was sick and um, I could tell she wasn't feeling well. And her mom was like, um, we're just gonna let her do it. Her mom, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna worry about mom. I'm gonna worry about her. She's just gonna come in the booth. And I said to her, what's wrong with you? She said, oh, I'm not feeling well. I said, we're gonna do two takes. God bless you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna read two time? takes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you can, we're gonna do two takes and that's it. She did two takes and she wound up booking the job. That's great. She didn't even think about it. Yeah. And then of course she was feeling much better when she actually did the job. And it's like, no, that's not what we want. You want you sick. No. no. <laughs> She's a problem. She's okay, a that, that's, that's what we're like. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Well, what's got to be interesting is that she would have heard that performance later, like I would think. And then she would hear copy the. That. It, how, I mean, because how much time right. between the audition and the day you do the gig? How much time elapses sometimes? It Can depends. It be a month? Animation, animation, it could wind up being like, like probably three months, maybe six months. Right. It wow. depends on the production schedule. If it's commercial, you know the turnaround is going to be a little quicker. You know, promo is going to be a little quicker. Um, Every other genre, narration, medical, all that stuff takes, you know, yeah. maybe a couple of weeks. For, so you definitely gonna have to re replay or play back mm -hmm. what it is that you did that what, what they did. job. Exactly. What you sounded like that day. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So let, let me take this a little bit more in the macro. How do you help someone find their voice? And I know you know what I mean, because everybody has their voice, but everybody seems to want to sound like somebody else. We certainly see that in the tech world where it's like, hey, you got to make me sound great and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
How do you find help people find their authentic voice? I listen to them as a person, and I listen to. I get this kind of a sixth sense or a feeling, and I listen to who they are and whether or not their wall is up. I get a lot of actors that are walls up. And once I'm able to go ahead and either send them to someone or pull their wall down, that's how I can find who their actual voice is. It's about them being confident. And I'm looking for the confidence. That's how I help them find their voice. I've got to get them to be confident. I got to get them to be able to play. As silly and as fun as I am, I need them to be just somewhat like me, not as insane as I am, per se. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going that's going a bit a bit far. But, but yeah. that's what I do because I bounce around. If you've seen me in person, I'm bouncing around, I'm moving. Yeah, you're so like Tigger. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like my little brother second next to me. <laughs> but it's once I once I get them in a comfortable level and once they feel comfortable within themselves, then I pull out. I can hear their voice. Then I say, that's it. That's you. Now read the copy. I just automatically go ahead and get them in a state of read the copy and read the copy now before you lose it. Right, right. Now, you've been working with a lot of kids lately. I mean, like, as you were just saying, you know, little girl, little guy, you know, people under 10. Is it, how, how do you direct them? Is it a little bit different than dealing with adults? Because, you know, you, you can't really throw the emotion in there the same way. It's about who, it depends on who the child, who the little kid is. So I have to understand them and then I have to understand the parent. And so that's an important I part have, is that the that's parent a is very important, important part. part. Yeah. And the part and the parent is there. So I have to allow the parent to be the parent. But at the same token, I'm here for the child. So I have to understand the kid's personality. I tell me about what, what, what you like, you know, as far as um, your subjects in school. What do you like to do for fun? What do you do in your off time? I need to know everything about the kid. Once I get to understand their acting, understand who they are, and then I can go ahead and push the parent aside. Then I'm able to go ahead and dig down in, you know, and pull performances out of the kid. Because kids just want to go. They just want right. to do it. They're not thinking about it. So for me, I sometimes have to throw in a laugh or a joke here and there, get the kid to calm down, and then, you know, make it fun. You know? All righty. Yeah. We're talking with Everett Oliver. Once again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. I'm looking forward to lots of questions in the next segment. So uh, mm -hmm. so get those in We're there. We're looking at them in YouTube and Facebook, by the way. So right. whatever thing you're on, you well, can type it. Just, you know, if you can type. I mean, and Jeff will grab it. That's right. And uh, so anyway, we're going to take a quick break right now. We'll get back to some of those questions. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Everett Oliver here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing, and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. Hello, it's a, the files are ready. Viewer, Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is Hockey Practice? Fanatic. Check out this song. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I'm um, the same as you. I love this show. And I'm glad you're watching. Um, the I last week from BMW. We opened and closed. Who said saving the couldn't be stylish? Only week it's open hey, for the Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael.jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if they all stop waxing this mustache for a minute, one of the big we'll questions the we got was, that's a pretty hefty price tag. Do you have a payment plan? And I'm happy to tell you that headphones I for voiceover. One. For those of you who looked at the price of the incredible value that you were that's getting, but the price I was a little Harlan Hogan's outside budget, how do we do it? So we have an option of 
From voiceover essentials. Go to VOHeroes.com. Harlan's cans are incredibly go. strong and lightweight. That's and only 8.4 ounces. Go. The combination and straight all coiled the audio cables stretches from 5 to 10 feet. All the money all at once. We can give it comes with two gold plated mini plugs and a studio standard quarter inch screw on adapter. And includes the new the mini jack on the left headphone for easy cord replacement. The studio monitoring headphones are optimized for voice work. Now, even better, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Headphones 2.0. And for a limited time, when you buy the headphones, you'll also get a free autographed copy of Harlan's best-selling book, VO, Tales and Techniques of a VoiceOver Actor, 2nd Edition. It's full of stories from the trenches and insights about making the most of your voiceover career. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now and order yours. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back. At least I can look into the camera and, oh yeah, we're back. I trust that we are back. I'm, I'm assuming that we are. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Everett Oliver is our guest, our good friend who is an audition director, and we have a pile of of questions, which is that we do. fabulous. You look, if you're voice actors, you can't be shy. Ask your question. What do we got? Uh, we'll start out with an easy one that came in email from Sarah Switek. And her question is, thank you so much for hosting the show with Ever Oliver tonight. She says to Dan and I, my question is, again, how long should a voiceover resume be? I'll ask first, is there such thing as a voiceover resume? I have one. Your, your demo, well, your demos, your resume. You uh, some people have a list of credits that they've worked on, list of coaches. Mm -hmm. um, it should probably be a page mm -hmm. if you're going to go ahead and, and and write the shows that you've booked, um, the coaches that you've worked on. Um, and what what context up. would you use a? Re I I just never hear that word resume thrown around talking. Um, about but what's a context where a voice, a resume would be useful? Like for video games, for video games, if you, you know, for anime, mm -hmm. um, not so much um, uh, animation, they really don't care, but I would say for anime and for video games, for sure. Mm -hmm. Especially if they have new directors, especially young directors that people who have been, you know, who are new to that field mm -hmm. and people who've been doing it for a very long time. Um, and your demo is your calling card. Yeah, that's, that's an important part. Now, here, here's the thing that, I, that I'd always wondered about, because we all have demos. You know, some of right. us have more demos than others. Mm -hmm. But generally, people get booked off of their auditions, don't they? I mean, does, how, impo how important is your demo really to the whole production process? Well, Dan, things have changed now in 2022. Okay. Not everybody gets booked off of their auditions anymore. They get booked off of their demos. Oh. So yes, I'm so it's asked. very it's very important that you you have your demos current. Um, I would say probably within maybe two years, you probably want to go ahead and go ahead and get a new demo. Um, I think it's kind of insane to have a demo for per category, um, you know, for each genre. But you definitely, I mean, animation and video games, you should use those as two separate demos. Um, maybe have a narration demo, commercial, and a promo. Um, maybe a medical narration demo for sure. You'll need one for that, e-learning. Um, I don't necessarily know you need an e-learning corporate narration, but 
people are going to, you know, if you're doing two separate things, sure, you need a demo for that. Maybe if you had more of a body of work in those different units, different genres, then you might want to do a real a cut reel of them, right? Because it's so unique well, to that thing, or no? I mean, they used to do that years ago, probably, you know, 2015, 16, 17, they, they mm -hmm. would have that. But now, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a short time span. Yeah. You know, so when people are listening to stuff, they want stuff really quick, short to the point. And, and the thing that drives me insane is you need to have your telephone number <laughs> on your website <laughs> Con and not just have your info? email. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and not be looking for it, uh, you know. So yeah. that's that's one of the fascinating things about people, you know, having a voiceover website. It's like it's got to be animated and it's got to do that. Nobody cares. Mm -mm. Nobody it's cares that business card. your name, your demos, and <laughs> demos. how to find you. Mm -hmm. And you're in your um, logo, your branding. That should all be able to just stick out, stand out. Right. Mm -hmm. All righty. A uh, question from Patricia Andrea. She says, uh, I have one thing for the guys. So I've been booth, I've been in the booth, been practicing, got a bit of voice coaching, still looking for a voiceover coach, but I'm stuck in the types of samples to make as new. And do I start on Fiverr? How long has she been coaching? See, when I do career consultations, this is what it's stuff that I need to know. I need to know how long you've been coaching. I need to know if um how long what kind of acting classes have you taken? What kind of improv classes have you taken? Where are you located? I need to know basic foundation work for me to go ahead and answer her question. Right. Well, perhaps she should contact you. <laughs> and, and, how would she, and how would she do that? We'll give you the chance again later, but how would they do that? Oh, e, my initial EO at voiceactingdirector.com. Once again, we're talking with Everett Oliver. We're talking about auditioning for voiceover work. And, and you specialize in animation and in gaming, right? More animation, I would say. Um, I specialize in commercials. So I've, you know, audition-wise, I cover all genres because it's all acting to me, you know? So it's just a matter of me hearing how well you connect to that piece of copy that you're reading and bringing yourself to it. But really, my main focus is animation is top priority, and video um, commercial is my second. All right, you know, and if we're talking about improv, we got Scott Parkin coming on in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, his, oh yeah, his rib is healed, That's... so he you knows he's actually going to come back. He's on. ready. He's ready. Right, and if mm -hmm. and if it's still sore, he's still going to bring alcohol, which is <laughs> the most important thing, which apparently he thinks is great for improv. <laughs> anyway, next question from Terry Briscoe. Uh, Terry asks, Everett, when you give that second take, uh, give us some things to focus on to make it pop. For instance, pa for instance, pacing, raising or lowering your voice, different accents, et cetera. So you got the first take down, you're happy with. Where do you go from there? Uh, depends on what the copy is. You want to go on a deeper level. Yes, it has to do with pacing. Um, bringing, it depends. If you didn't have a point of view in your first take, you need to bring that to your second take. Um, accents, only do an accent that you feel comfortable with, that an accent from a region of where you come from or heritage. If you're putting on a phony accent, I would not do it because they're going to know right away. Mm -hmm. um, second take, uh, you don't want to emulate the first take as far as your acting style. So, you know, I say go for it, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. If you think it's going to be over the top, a lot of people who think they're who think that going over the top is going to make them really over the top, but it's not, you know, it, which means to me is, is that they've never able to, they don't know how to get out of the comfort zone. They don't know what being like over the top is. So they're scared. They're afraid to mm -hmm. even go there. And so what I do is I push them. So you need to push yourself to go over the top and nine times out of 10, it's not going to be over the top because your personality doesn't fit that, depending on who you are. And sometimes, you know, for animation, you have to do stuff that's over the top. That's what's going to make you stand out. Yeah, and that's an anime. I've learned animation is always over the top. It's like, you know, it's not normal human. Reserved. It's always right. 
But Open video that. game is the opposite, right? Video game is more about realism. It's real. It's more about yeah. realism, it's cinematic, right? It's really pulling those layers and really connecting and bringing, bringing your like her depending on you know some casting directors like to hear your heritage, bring some of your background foundation to the read from where you come from, where your family comes from. Yeah. So yeah. Oy. Um. <laughs> Here's one from uh, from Grace Newton. She said, asks, as a booth director, when you were a booth director, mm -hmm. what is the most challenging thing that you face in a day? Um, auditioning one person with six pieces of copy and trying to get it get, get it done in fifteen and twenty minutes. <laughs> trying yeah, to get too much done in too little time. Trying to get yeah. that used to right. And it, it was a constant, you know, being at the agency was great. It gave me the foundation and even to this day of me moving people in a fast, quick pace. But that was the challenging part is really is the deadlines. We had to get the deadlines out and you have you guys have to be ready and be prepared. And rather than that, just coming in like it's uh, you didn't study like you would do in high school and college. I'm thinking of one of my students right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to do it off the cuff. And they know, you know it works for some people. It works for some people. You know, some people could. Sounds what's like something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> right, sounds like me. Yeah, and it, that's why they mention your name. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, here's an interesting question, and George and I are going to look at this and go, "What?" Uh, from Dan Alpern, he says, "Do you want to know if I audition from the road or a hotel room, but have a better sounding home studio? Should you tell them?" Well, mm. I oh, mean, that's actually an interesting question. Yeah, kind uh, of. Yeah, I mean, but. I, I always find that people are like, I got to audition from the road. I'm, so I'm, unless, of course, they're in the road company of hair or something. So he's worried like that, that his audition he does from the road isn't representative of his home studio. Right. So I'm, I guess I'm saying, why bother? Right. Should, should you bother? Right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mention. Well, I, I think you should. I mean, you know, you're, you're submitting something. I don't think in this day and age, unless your sound quality is that bad that you shouldn't. But I think you should. You make those preparations when you're going on a trip. You should bring all that stuff with you. I bring my stuff with me when I'm traveling. So why not? You know, but I wouldn't let the client know that I'm auditioning, you know, from the road at home. I wouldn't say that. You know, you make sure your sound quality is just as good at home as it is on the road. So you need to pull it off. What you're saying is you need to pull off a really good Make it work. Road make kit. it work. Mm -hmm. right. Make it work. All right. Do what Let's you go. have to do. You're you're a professional, so do what you have to do. And that requires knowledge of how to record on the road. And don't just like, you know, you can't wing it. You got you have to know mm -hmm. what it sounds it's, like. It's advanced. Absolutely. Well, it wouldn't be voiceover body shop unless Jay Horace Black had a question for us. So uh, Jay. Jay, you go for it. <laughs> yeah, he said, I just want to say thanks again for facilitating the connection with with LA representation. Apparently that happened. Oh. Um, can't tell you how pleased <laughs> I am. Appreciate you, bro. Um, he's been getting a lot of auditions lately that only ask for one take. What's your suggested approach for these kinds of things? And are they just Go doing that because they're just yeah, too they probably don't have the time. <laughs> they, they probably don't want to listen to everything. If you're going to do one take, go for it. Don't hold back. Bring every nook and cranny. And Jay, stop worrying and stop thinking, because you tend to worry and think. <laughs> oh, and he asks a lot of questions. He does. <laughs> stop asking. Just do it. Just whatever it is. Because, yeah. Jay, there's too many people auditioning for the same thing. You have to. Uh, my thing is, is this. You have to go to a conference. Once you go to a conference and you see how many people is at a conference, that's going to tell you what your competition is. Okay. So I, I don't know what else to say. You just need to just do it and go for it. You know, you guys have to also, I had notes here too. You guys have to network. You have to put yourself out there. Some of you think guys think that you're going to actually book from just doing an audition, not in 2022, not in 2023 and not in 2024. People, there's so many of you. You have to put yourself out there through marketing, through you know having a relationship with your coach, through going to conferences. 
this is how you get seen and this is how you get noticed. Mm-hmm. Being at home, sticking at home and being in your booth is not going to get you noticed. Mm. I've said my piece. Tough love's coming. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. If if we can't if we don't hear it from you, what's it? Worth? Jay, <laughs> Jay, Jay is a, Jay, I mean Jay's awesome. I mean, we all yeah. take. Oh yes, yeah. he asks really good questions, but it does mm-hmm. show you that Jay's he's a thinker. He's serious. He's serious he's about it, thinker. but he thinks. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. and and he should not think. He should just let it go mm-hmm. and just do whatever comes natural and trust yeah. yourself and trust your instincts. Right. You know, if you're playing mm-hmm. it too safe and you know you've been playing it safe and it's not working out, then the other way of doing it is okay. Let me just go for it. Right. You know, meaning go big. Right. You Easier know? said than done for a lot of people. I mean, of course, if, if you really can't ad lib or you really can't be relaxed, voiceover perhaps is not the profession for you. I mean, you've got to be able to, you know, look outside the box and those sorts of mm-hmm. things. How do you help someone relax and, and, and do that kind of thing? It's, it's not easy. I mean, it's, it's still hard for me, you know, except that I, I make I, them. You know, I've been doing it for years, and it's like I make them. Yeah, you make them. <laughs> no, I mean, I make I I do off the wall stuff. I you know I get in their heads. I make them laugh. I I do stuff to just relax them. Once I get them relaxed, then I go ahead and I approach them approach to get into copy. You just have to just uh, you know I tell people actually to you know go jump on a trampoline. I tell people to go exercise. I mean running, go running, go biking, go skateboarding. I tell people to go do something fun. And then mm-hmm. go do your audition. So that way you're in a really playful mind. There are tons of people that are doing that. Um, go have a conversation with uh, whoever just to distract you. Uh, go do gardening. Go swimming. Um, you know, go walk your dog. Um, do something fun before you go ahead and you're going to go tack- tackle those auditions. That's going to help you get into a mood. You know, because you're in a playful mood, you're not thinking about it. And again, it should only take you 30 minutes. If it's taking you longer, you're wasting your time, as one of my agents would tell me. Wasting their time. They're not going to book it. They're overthinking it. When, so- when somebody gets a script and they're re- what what is the prep process that you would like them to do when they, they first see it? You know, there's the specs, there's the copy. You know, then, you know, and the specs sometimes can be much longer than the copy, mm-hmm. which we, we tend to see an awful lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what process would you like to see them do? Read the script three times. Read the script enough three times so they're understanding what is required from them. Then after they read the script three times, they should go ahead and they should start marking the scripts. They should put in there where their emotional turns are going to be. They should, with their, where they're going to probably improv. Um, where, you know, certain buttons that they're going to go ahead and, and get, then go ahead and read the copy at least once on mic, just to kind of see where their true point of view is going to come through, you know, just read it, you know, read and act for the first take, then read and act again for the sec- t- second take where they're not thinking about it, walk away for another 15, 20 minutes just to go ahead and clear their head and then go back and read it for the third take. They have three, di- they should have three different takes. They should be done in a half hour. And then when they're done, stop thinking about it. Check the labeling, cause that's important. And leave it alone. Don't, don't, don't think about it. Don't call me. Don't think after thoughts. <laughs> don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> don't email me and say, oh, I need you to re-listen to this before I send it out. If you want don't me to listen me. to it, it's going it's to cost. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, because my actors are actually, my actors are bold enough. They will send me text messages. It's just like, hey, I need you to see this. I'm like, okay, it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's going to cost you. I'm, I'm listening. Uh, yeah, people need to le- let it go every now and Again, you know, you, have like you to. send it out. I mean, I, I've gotten, I've done so many auditions in my lifetime. It's like, go, you know, just shove mm-hmm. it down the pipe and like, I, you know, I got to go walk the dog or I got to go but feed, it's right. feed the dog but it's, or something. But you have to remember too, is it's more than just these auditions. This is what I was saying earlier. It's about you really have to network and put yourself out there and meet people. This is how you're going to find work. You, you could keep auditioning until you blew in the face. But if nobody knows who you are, that's going to be a problem. Right. You know, this is when you're doing it for years and years and you're wondering why. 
You know, maybe you're coaching with people who are not connected with you, who don't understand you. You know, that could be an issue. Maybe, you know, you totally you're getting bad advice from people. Maybe you're not going to these conferences. You know, maybe you're an introvert and you're trying to, you know, I meet tons. There's tons of people who are introverts in our industry. And it's mm -hmm. like you have this emotional wall up. And it's like, well, how do I get my emotional wall down? It's like, I'm not a therapist per se, even though my colleague, Uncle Roy, always says we're all a therapist if we're coaches. Yeah, <laughs> even those tech guys. Yeah, tech, tech guys. guys. Even tech people are therapists, exactly. <laughs> but it's like, I send people as people to somebody to really work with them to getting their wall down. But it's a thing of, you know, you've got to be comfortable in your own skin mm -hmm. to do this work. You really need to know who you are. And once you understand the dynamics of who you are, and how you tick, you're going to put that towards the copy, whether it's a character or whether it's commercial copy. And once you understand that dynamics, that's what's going to help you book. But if you're sitting here, if you, it's like if you can't make a decision in the grocery store, whether or not you're going to have tuna for dinner or this for dinner, then and, and that's, that's a problem going on in your everyday life. Then that's going to be a problem in your in your voiceover, your voiceover career. We got one last you question here. Yeah, we got one mm -hmm. last question here from Max Goldberg from YouTube. He says, when receiving an audition script with no specs whatsoever, what ways or steps are there to determine how one should self-direct and then proceed with recording? I would just bring you, I've never heard of anybody not having specs. I've, that's never happened to me in my oh, several years. I've, but I've seen it. I've never <laughs> seen that. But I would say if that happened, I would say just bring yourself to it. Whatever the copy is, look at the copy and bring your, your true authentic truth to it. Bring yourself to it. Yeah. All righty. It's probably not a Damn. time to throw something crazy against the wall and see what sticks. Right. Just be. That's true, too. You. What you're playing, true. And, and use that as the second take. Oh, there you go. That's your second take. That's, right. That's your second take. Good job, George. You've learned. You listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've only heard you say that about 400 times. Uh, yeah. So is Patrick Kushner. <laughs> <laughs> this man, sure, gonna, this man sure, says names. <laughs> this man says names on this show. Oh, I call you out. I call you out. You know I'm <laughs> Already. Well, Everett, as always, it, aside from just hanging out with you, it's a pleasure having you on the show and offering your... Uh, your expertise on on how mm. to audition better. Again, if people want to work with you, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, EO at voiceactingdirector.com. Uh, and voiceactingdirector.com is my website. Um, I won't give up my telephone number because some, some of them already have my cell phone number. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people <laughs> yeah. already have. Oh, there's a lot of people that <laughs> I have it, and when I see it come up, oh, it's ever. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's that's why I'm the only one in America that has a landline too. <laughs> <laughs> well, every thanks for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it, and uh, thanks so and, much, guys. Good luck in the future on all that. Same, 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 all right. man. Great to see you. I will see you soon. All right, Alrighty. take care. All right, George all right. and I will be right back to wrap things up and re rack it for Tech Talk right after this. So don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. It's that time on the show where we thank Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, the most predominantly widely used remote recording tool in the voiceover business. 
completely has taken over for ISDN. If you don't know what ISDN is, don't worry about it. But it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> but ISDN was how studios tended to connect to their best and most well-loved and highest paid clients um, because it was easy for them to get great audio. Now with Source Connect, it's even easier for producers to get great audio straight into Pro Tools, which is what they are going to be using most of the time probably at the studio. The workflow is efficient, and that is why they love it. So you want to have this tool in your toolbox. You want to be proficient. You might even consider paying them, I think it's $75 for the certification, which isn't just like paying for a little badge. They actually teach you stuff. They will actually go through your system. They will make sure your system is set up properly. They will, if there's some issues with the sound, they actually will give you some advice to make it better. It's it's a very worthwhile expense to make sure that your quality is where it should be for Source Connect. So just another way they provide great service. So you can go over to source-elements.com, get yourself a demo, poke around, watch the videos, spend some time, and then when you're ready, subscribe or pay for your license outright and own it for life. You can do that right over at source-elements.com. We'll be right back. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. All righty. Well, like I said, Scott Parkin's going to be here in a couple of weeks, you know, which we missed him last time he was here. But Yeah, I know which will be a lot of fun. Not next week, the week after that. Okay. And then we have a two week, you know, our cycle, we'll have Scott Parkin and then we'll mm -hmm. do tech talk again. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but we're only, I think we're only going to miss like one week. Okay. Maybe two. We're, we're, we're doing our best to not miss it between all the travels, the holidays, everything else. Uh, God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, it got kind of weird trying to fit it all together, but anyway, next week on this very show, there will be tech talk number 88. 88. <laughs> it is. It's going to be 88. 88. But we're going to record that in just a minute. So stay tuned. If you got tech questions, we want to hear the, your tech questions. Yeah. Uh, but we do have people that help us do this show, and that is the donors of the week. Yes, sir. And they are Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Greg Thomas, a doctor voice, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, 949 Designs. All right. Jonathan Grant, <laughs> Christopher Epperson. Jonathan Grant's in there twice. Lucky son of a... Did okay. he make a double donation? I may have done that. He, no, he's just a smart dude. That's why he's in there twice. Makes <laughs> me, yeah, all right. Uh, Chris Epperson. <laughs> Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Dana Birdsall. Sandra Manwiller. I love saying all those names. We say them all the time because they're subscribers. They didn't just make a one-time payment. They're, they're subscribing. And you can do that for as little as a buck. That's a right. A buck a month. Right. You know, it's all it takes to get your name read every, every show. Right. But it's because they're supporting our show. Yeah. Because they, they believe in the great stuff that we do here at VoiceOver Body Shop. I guess so. 
Yeah. Or they just want to hear the, the name, name right at the end yeah, of the show. Which is probably pretty I think much that's what probably it is. What it is yeah. All right. We need to thank our <laughs> sponsors. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. JMC Demos. And WorldVoices.org, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Mm-hmm. It just come, sort of flows off my mind when I say that because... It should at this point. It, by now it should. <laughs> It's your job. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my other job. Anyway, <laughs> our thanks to Jeff Holman for getting all those questions to us in the thanks, chat room Jeff. tonight. We really appreciate it. He's like, his career is just taken off. So glad to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was in that, that you know. Uh, uh, He's Lucille doing a ton Hall. of on-camera stuff. I know. It's great stuff. Mm-hmm. we got to get him in here so we can hear what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sue Merlino. In, in the, the studio in tonight. The flesh. Yes. Actually here tonight. It's about time we're all together. I guess we're going to have to do some drinking after this or something. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks, Sue, for a great job tonight. And, of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for this. Tech Talk is coming up next live, so if you want to ask your questions, now would be a good time to throw it in the chat room because we're going to do all that stuff, and we got some cool stuff to talk about tonight. But in the meantime, this is not an easy business. There's so many things you got to do be able to do right. But when it comes down to it, you know, high audition and your, you know, your tech ne- technology and all that stuff, it really comes down to if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, and I'm George Whittem, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS. BS. See you next week. <laughs>